Hello, welcome to this special edition of Straight Out of Scriptures. I want to give you a gift today. I want to equip you for wealth, for prosperity, and for financial blessings. Uh, listen, God has a plan for our finances. God wants us to live in prosperity. God has spoken to you probably and he has told you how big you are going to be financially. And like Solomon, God gave you a word. But how did Solomon's blessing happen? How did he come into so much wealth? Uh, there is enough evidence in scriptures for us to be able to live uh, according to the mind of God and to enter into what Solomon entered into. Bible gave us evidences, gave us uh, clues, uh, and if we look at these clues, we will understand what he did, and if we will do them by the spirit of wisdom, we will also enter into what he enters into. So today, I want to break to you, I want to give you certain things, and today I'm speaking on breaking the Solomon's wealth code. Get a jota, get an oath, uh, it's time for you to move to another level. If this is your first time on this YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe, uh, generally just engage with this channel, drop your comment, uh, chat, uh, talk to Someone about these, uh, this will transform your life literally. This will change your life. Uh, all right, so we're going to begin now uh, by reading First Kings chapter 3, verses 4 to 13. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father. Although I am but a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life, or riches, or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem, and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. Starting place of wealth is not skills, nor is it only inheritance. The starting place for wealth is not skills or inheritance. Why? Because the starting place for true wealth is peace and wisdom. Listen, except there is peace in your heart, there will not be there won't be inspiration. You won't know what to do. You would be walking uh, with pressure. God will not inspire you. You will not see opportunities. So the starting place is peace. As scripture says to us in John chapter 14 and verse 27. For every believer, Jesus said, My peace I give unto you, not as the word give, give I unto you. So God has given us peace. Um, scripture also speaking about wisdom. Uh, wisdom is from God. Job was asking, uh, is, is wisdom underneath the heart? Where is wisdom? Where is the place of wisdom? Uh, he said, I've searched under the heart, I've searched everywhere, I can't find it. Uh, and then he said, wisdom is with God. Uh, and therefore, I love Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10, uh, Psalm 111 verse 10. Scripture says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Therefore, wisdom comes from God. The wisdom for financial prosperity, the wisdom for wealth is from God. Until God gives you and open that door to you, you will not get it. Therefore, the starting place is two things which you must have. These are situational factors around you. These are things that must be in place if you will enter into financial wealth. And the first one is peace. You must have peace, serenity, the blessings of God. Your mind must be at rest. Your mind must be stayed on the Lord. When you operate under pressure, you are you are compressing ideas. You are compressing even the flow of inspiration from God for your life. Wisdom will not flow. Therefore, two things are essential. Peace and wisdom. So today's teaching is to open your eyes. After you've had those situational things around you, I want to open your eyes into God's promises. Listen to this. God told Solomon, I will make you extremely wealthy. 
in 1 Kings chapter 3, 11 to 13. That's where we read. He said, because you have asked of these things, uh, he said, I will make you wealthy, surpass uh, in wealth uh, those that are before you and those uh, that are after you. God gave him a promise. You know, recently I was chatting with a guy and I was telling him, uh, you know, God said this to Solomon. He said, I'm going to make you wealthy. He said, but God said the same thing to me. Listen, many people God has said that same things too, but those things are not happening in their life. Why? Because they are not walking in line with the promises of God. Listen to this, Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. He said, I am the Lord who gives you power to make wealth. I am the Lord. That word power is the ability. It doesn't mean it's going to just rain it down on you money, rain it down on you gold and silver. What it's going to do is that it's going to give you ideas uh, that when you translate them, uh, it becomes wealth. The Bible says he is the one who gives you ability. But ability can be residual. Ability must be translated uh, into kinetic. It must be translated uh, into being used. Uh, God gives the ability, you and I, it's our responsibility to make it work. Now, let me lay a solid foundation. That the foundation foundation for wealth spiritually the foundation for wealth for the believer is god's word are you following me god said to solomon i will so when god's word came because god's word they are spirit and they are alive john chapter 6 verse 63 there was something that was released ability was released favor was released when god say a thing to you angelic hosts are released the bible talks about angels who do the will of god that they are released to ensure that there is a performance of that which God has said. So I tell people that, do you want to get wealthy? Do you want to have enough? Do you want to live in enough? Do you want to enter into what David called the wealthy place? If you want to enter into such places, there is a foundation you must have, is that you must have a revelational truth about your finances. And that is in God's word. God must speak to you. You must stay with God. Bible says Solomon sacrificed a thousand carols, bullocks. And after he did that, God came to him. There are certain things you will do that will spur God to action in your life. That will make God say a thing concerning you. And I'm here to tell somebody that when you do that, God says a word. The foundation is laid for your wealth. The foundation is laid even for your finances. So the starting place is God's word. Now, let me say this to you. And this is where many of us get it wrong. We, 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 we come from that place where the foundation is laid. And then we begin to say, uh, you know what? God has said it and that settles it. And they begin to rest. Uh, they begin to sleep. Uh, every word God gives, uh, there will be a performance. Uh, but there are certain words God gives that before the performance happens, uh, they, they, really, they need to be an alignment uh, with your life. Uh, you must permit. There are certain things you must do. Number one, certain words of God will only come to pass when we align with the word. You align in spirit. You align in your actions. So if God says, listen, I'm going to make you wealthy. I'm going to make you rich. I will raise you up as a sign of sure in your family, in your household, in your lineage. Listen, that is a word from God. But you must align with that word, with your actions. There are actions that you will do that will nullify, that you will take, that will nullify what God has said nullify what God has said. Remember the story of Solomon. Solomon died. His son came into being. Before the son came, uh, there was a promise to Jeroboam. Bible says God said a prophet to him and said, I'm going to give you a family. I'm going to raise uh, a generation of priesthood of kings through you. And Bible says when he became king uh, over 11 tribes of Israel, when he became over 10 tribes, I beg your pardon, he became king. Bible says he turned from the Lord and he repented. God changed his mind and God did not do what God has said because why? Because Jeroboam did not align in action with what God has said. Listen, there are certain actions that nullify God's promises. Number two, you can't by your actions and in actions validate or invalidate the word of God. Are you following? By your actions, you can invalidate it. You can't say, God has said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you exceedingly rich. I'm going to make you exceedingly great. And then you begin to sleep and do nothing. Listen, you are by that action invalidating what God has said. Number three, for there to be a performance, there must be cooperation with divinity. You must cooperate with God. Oh, when God says a thing, you must follow through on it. When God gives an idea, you must follow through on it. That's cooperation. When God tells you, do a thing, you must do it. That's cooperation. Cooperation is not just passive, it is active. It is not just a passive thing. I say, ah, I'm submitted to God passively. No, there is an action. 
there is an active thing to do when you follow God. Many people say God said it and that settles it. I believe it and that settles it. Listen, if you do nothing and you do not align and cooperate with God, nothing is going to happen about what God has said. Can I say that to you again? Absolutely nothing. You can't say because I've said it, it's going to, God has said it's going to happen. No, it needs your cooperation. Oh, unto men will I call my voice will be unto the sons of men. God needs our cooperation. God needs us to come upon the scene so that things will happen in our lives. If you say everything is dependent on God, for instance, a man get married and say God has said that we are going to have children and it does not come together with his wife in copulation, nothing is going to happen. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. His name is not Joseph, neither is his wife Mary. And the miracle child has been given back to you. So, Jesus has come. No other expectation. You have to do something. You have to do something. Nothing happened. If God says he will anoint you, then you must pay the price. You must pray. You must read the word of God. You must sacrifice. You must do certain things. If God says he will heal you, then there are certain things you must also do. God says, I'm going to heal you for diabetes. You are healed from diabetes. And then because God has said it, you now go and go buy bottles of soft drinks. And then you begin to take soft drinks. You just begin to take them. Listen, that's foolishness. That's foolishness. By your actions, you are already invalidating the word of God. God's word will come to pass. Listen to this. Your part uh, is to pray. Your part is to believe. Uh, your part is to align. Your part is to walk. Uh, because God's word has guaranteed something on your life. Now, let me go back to Solomon now. I just gave you a, sh- a general principle. Now, let me go back to Solomon now. Immediately, God gave Solomon that word. I said, I'm going to make you well. There's something happened to Solomon. A favor came upon his skills. A favor came upon his head. A favor came upon his ability. Now, when God says something to you, what happens is that God's word will open you up to a realm and a dimension of favor. A realm and a dimension of beauty. Bible says, let the beauty of the Lord, let it be upon us. 1917 of Psalms. He said, may it establish the works of our hands. So, when God says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to increase you more and more. Immediate, immediately, you receive that word. Something is activated spiritually. It is called the favor of God. It is called the grace and the blessings of God. It comes upon your works. It comes upon your hands. Therefore, everything you touch become blessed. Therefore, you see results where others are not seeing results. That's what happened to Isaac. God says, stay in this land. And in the time of famine, he sowed in the land and he reaped an hundredfold. That's the favor of God. He wasn't doing anything differently than others were doing. Oh, people probably were not even uh, planting because they could not see rain. But he did it. Why? Because God has said it. Listen, there is something you must do. A planting you must observe. Why? Because God has said it. Listen, I love scriptures. Bible says uh, in Romans chapter 15 verse 4 that these things were written for our learning. Our learning that we through the patience of the scriptures. uh, Oh God, we might come to the reality of... Listen, these things were written for our learning. Our learning. Now, I want us to quickly take a closer look as I round up today. I want us to quickly take a closer look at the life of Solomon. Today, my work is cut off. I want to see because the scriptures were written for our learning. The things about the lives of Solomon were written for our learning. The things, how he came into the dimension of the wealth he came into were written for our learning. It wasn't just that God said it. There were certain things that Solomon did. There were certain things that made the blessings come. Listen, when you get to the end of Solomon's life and you saw the beginning, you say, oh, God said it. And you got to the end and you say, oh, he's become a wealthy person. What happened in between? What, what, What happened in between? What were the daily commitments of Solomon? How did his money increase? In, in in stocks how did it increase in leap and in bounds how i'm going to share that with you and that's why i call it breaking the solomon wealth code we want, we want to break that code i want to show you practical things practical ventures solomon was involved in that got him into the reality of the fullness of god's promises and god's word because God has said it, there are practical realities, practical things you will do, practical ventures you will be involved in uh, that will ensure that those things come to pass in your life. Break it, the Solomon's wealth code. How did he get into so much wealth? I want to begin to share that with you because I saw that in scriptures. 
and that's clear. Number one, and maybe you can call it talking about the source of Solomon's wealth. Talking about how the wealth came into being. What, were he, what was he doing? How did the money come? How did the silver, the gold, the cattle, the horses, how did they come? I'm going to show that to you today. And I'm going to show that to you today. So ju- just follow closely. You don't want to miss this. Just follow very closely. Don't sleep off. Don't do anything. Just watch very closely. Take a pen. Write it down. Number one, he had massive wealth from inheritance. Solomon had massive wealth from inheritance. Don't fool yourself. Don't lie to yourself. His father, David, was a man of war. There were spoils uh, of war. David was a rich man by all standard. And Solomon, we could assume that Solomon entered into certain inheritance of David, his father. Solomon entered as the king after his father. There were certain things he met in the palace. There were certain things he had. There were certain wealth he came into because his father was rich. And that's why scripture says that uh, a good man leaves an inheritance even for his children. children. Listen, David was a good man. If your father did not leave an inheritance for you, still continue with me. You will still find out uh, how you get it. But the first fundamental thing you will see in the life of Solomon was that his father was rich. Now, how does that concern you as a believer today? You must, if your father is not rich, it must be your commitment uh, to be a good man, to raise uh, stock to build stock for your children so that your children have a leverage in life they are not playing from the ground they are not building from the ground they are building from a pedestal something you have built they are building upon it listen solomon entered into inherited wealth and that was sure clear from scriptures but from history we also know and we have an understanding that wealth that is inherited is really increased Mm, follow me now there are people who were rich people who are rich like like rockefeller of the united states of america very rich man massively rich his children came into inheritance his grandchildren came to inheritance but they never increased the inheritance it's only in real cases uh, that people take what the father had done and increase it and make it greater and better I don't know whether it's the training of the children. I don't know whether it's God's life is easier for them. I don't understand it. I don't know it. But something you will find in the life of Solomon was that he increased the wealth of David. He increased. Uh, David was wealthy, yes. He got many of the things he got through war. Yes. Uh, you can't fight war now. So you can't follow the David pattern. You can't just go and be killing people and taking spoils from them and, and just rustling cattle. Uh, you will become a terrorist. You will be called a terrorist. You are not allowed to do that. But during those days that's what they did and that's how they came into some wealth some sudden level of wealth they just go fight a village and then they rustle a cattle from them take of whatever they have and bring it to them and then their wealth increases when you go to fight a battle you don't only win um, um you only win and then say you conquer the land you conquer the land and conquer their wealth whatever it is that is their possession you also take it so david had some of these things and david passed some of them up to, jo- up, up to Solomon. So Solomon added. But Solomon increased it. Uh, so Solomon must have done well by practicing certain things to make him increase it. Uh, what is the hope we have that don't have an advantage? Uh, you can follow me and you will find your advantage. Uh, number two, what did Solomon have? What did he have? How, how did he enter into so much wealth? I said that uh, breaking his, Solomon's wealth code. Number one, he had massive wealth from inheritance from David. Number two, Battering, trade by battle. Battering is the exchange of goods and services between two or more persons without money being involved. Solomon was involved in this kind of thing. He was making a lot of profiting by battering. That means he would give something he has in abundance and he would exchange it for something he does not have at all. And by this, he entered into so much increase. Battering is actually the oldest form of commerce. Individuals and companies batter goods and services between each other. Now Solomon did this. Solomon was involved in this. Uh, you find out in the matter of um, while he wanted to build the temple, uh, he had a deal, or so to say, with Iram, the king of Tyre. And Bible says in Second Chronicles two fifteen to sixteen. Now therefore, this was Iram speaking. The wheat, the barley, the oil, and the wine which my Lord has spoken of, let him send to his servant, and we cut wood from Lebanon as much as you need we will bring it to you in raft by sea to joppa and you will carry it up to jerusalem 
so he gave what he had in abundance so that he could get uh, even cedar wood from Lebanon and listen to this this one is very important first Kings 9 12 to 14 then Iram went from Tyre to see the cities which Solomon had given him so apart from Solomon exchanging wine with he also gave land uh, to Iram the king of Tyre now see what he got back Bible says then Iram went from Tyre to see the cities which Solomon had given him but they did not please him so he said what kind of cities are these which you have given me my brother and he called the name of the land of Kabul as they are to this day Kabul that was Iram giving that name uh, then Iran sent the, the king 120 talents of gold. You see that? He gave cities, the, he was sent 120 talents of gold. The man that even gave the city said this land is useless. <laughs> it's of no use. So there are things that you are not finding very useful in your own life. Things you have in abundance that you can use to exchange for something else. You think Solomon taught us how to use what we have to get what we want that is the principle behind battering what do you have i'm asking you believer what do you have skills properties time character you can volunteer your skill in order to get experience on your cv many companies will not take you today i have a friend who just traveled out of this country and he was saying that uh, and i was saying how are they going to take you you don't have experience they say i've been volunteering for a company for months uh, listen you can volunteer for a company for months uh, and because of that an experience is showing what he gave uh, without money the company is not paying him he's also not being he's also not paying the company but he's offering his time and his skill and what is he going to get experience on his cv so believers you can do this do you have something you can sell if you can find a buyer for it fine if you cannot exchange it maybe you had a farm you inherited a farm from your father you can take that farm and give it to somebody and say you know what go there and be farming whatever product you have i'll get 40 percent from it i'll get 50 percent from it instead of allowing that land to just waste away in the village you can do this about it this is the principle behind battery and you can see that solomon entered into serious wealth why because he was using this principle everything is not an exchange of money certain things are not about money certain things are just exchanging what you have to get what you want exchange what you have to get what you want believer number three we are breaking down the solomon wealth code number three buying and selling the key to financial wisdom is to ask the question what am i selling what am i selling you will not believe it but in scriptures Solomon was involved in buying and selling. He was the king, yes. He was the king, yes. But he was involved in buying and selling. I found that in scriptures. He was involved in buying and selling. Solomon was importing horses on the cheap and selling it for a profit. You find that in scripture. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 1, verses 16 to 17. Listen to this. And Solomon had horses imported from Egypt and Keve. The king's merchants bought them in Keve at the current price. They also acquired and imported from Egypt a chariot for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150. Thus, through their agent, they exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Syria. So, he bought it at the current price and then you know what? He was selling it off. This is something almost every businessman is involved in. Everyone is selling their services, selling their skills. You want to get married, some people are going to make money from you. Understand that? It's your wedding, it's your love, but you are going to pay for it. You are going to pay for the hall you are using. You are going to pay uh, for, for the skill of the photographer. You are going to pay for the skill of the makeup artist. You are going to pay for the skill of many things. Uh, listen, what are you selling? Today, you see people still make a lot of money from importing things. Uh, people go to China. They go on Amazon. They go on AliExpress. Buy certain things. Open a shop. Stock it up. And then they begin to sell it. Some people even sell it online. Uh, and they make a profit from it. Now, don't forget that you have a foundation. God has said he has, he's going to bless you now when you sell those things you don't ask the question what if i don't find people to buy people will buy people will buy why because the blessing is upon you people will buy because the blessing is upon you this is what we'll find in the life 
of uh, the man by the name of Solomon. I, I used to know a guy who goes to northern Nigeria and goes to, to southwestern Nigeria and is, he is into cash crops. Uh, he buys, he goes to inner villages uh, and he, buy, he buys cocoa, buys granola, uh, uh, buys, uh, buy, buys things, uh, cash crops uh, and then he brings them to the city, buy palm oil uh, and then he brings them to the city and sell for a profit and sell for a profit. Now, that's just the Solomon's method. You can and look around you and look at what can I sell. Do you know of any place? Uh, I know you are probably staying in the city now, but while you are growing up, do you know of any place or have you heard of any place where certain things can be gotten on a cheap? Uh, where certain commodities sell cheaply? You can go and take an advantage of that. Go to places where they sell those things, buy them, bring them to the city where it is going to be more expensive uh, or even send them to places where it's more expensive uh, and there is a ready market for them and then you make your profit. You make your profit. What is going on here? You are increasing in wealth uh, by following the principles that Solomon followed uh, and he got him into serious wealth. This is the first way to profit. Find something you can sell. The blessing of the Lord works better when there is a product you are selling. When there is a product you are selling, the blessing works better. The blessing works um, even on the product. And I like number four. We are breaking Solomon's wealth code. Number four, his skill set was an advantage. Oh, you need to understand this. His skill set was an advantage. Your spiritual or acquired gift can be your good pot. That's what I learned from Solomon. Your spiritual gift, your acquired gift can be your good pot. Bible says God gave Solomon wisdom. Don't forget that the Bible also spoke of a, of a woman, of a man who had wisdom but he was poor. Bible says he was not respected in his village. Why? Because he was poor. Although he had wisdom, he was not using his gold pots very well. Many people have skills. Many people have gone ahead to acquire skills upon skills. Many people have spiritual giftings, but they are not using it. It is not a gold pot for them because they are not following the principles of Solomon. This is the principle Solomon had. Listen, the questions you answer, you answer will determine how much gift and value you will obtain. Can I say that to you again? The questions you answer will determine how much gifts and values you will obtain. The answers you provide to a generation will open the door for you. The answers. Because this generation, every generation will ask questions. Every generation will be looking for a solution. The solution you provide will become your good path. The solution you provide. This is where pastors and spiritual consultants and counselors come in. Here is the where your pastor is digging from. Because they provide answers, solutions to people's needs, to people's problems. Many people bring gift to them. You think it's just tight and offering? No. Because they prayed for someone, answers came. Because they advised someone, they counsel someone, those people are also extending the hand even of financial gift to them. And it is normal. It is scriptural. It is, with, it is a principle we find even in the life of Solomon. It's a principle you must practice. Some people start a business and what are they doing? They are providing solutions. Someone needs to bab his hair. There is a, there is a barber shop down the road that what you are doing is that you are providing answers the answer you provide to a generation will also tell you the kind of value that the generation will pay you back with what answers are you providing look around you look around you look around you what is that thing that needs an answer in your neighborhood, uh, around you, in your community? Is there a branding company there? Is there a tech company there? Is there a financial company there? Look around you. What can you be the answer for? What can you be the answer for? Don't just sleep and say, ha, ah, God has given me his word. I am a blessing. Nothing will come if you do nothing. This is the principle of Solomon. Let's go through scriptures. And I'll give you scriptures again upon scriptures. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 9, 1 to 2. Bible says now when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to Jerusalem to test Solomon with hard questions, having a very great retinue, camels that bore spices, gold in abundance, and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. So Solomon answered all her questions. Can you see that? 
there was nothing so difficult for Solomon that he could not explain to her. This woman had been journeying in life with questions, but she found answers in Solomon. And what did she do? Bible says in 9 to 10, 2 Chronicles chapter 9, Blessed be the Lord your God, who delighted in you, setting you on his throne to be king for the Lord your God, because your God has loved you to establish them forever. Therefore, he made you king over them to do justice and righteousness. Verse 9, And she gave the king 120 talents of gold, spices in great abundance, and precious stones. There never were any spices such as those the queen of Sheba gave. To King Solomon. Can you see that? It's a principle. Let's see again 23 24, Second Chronicles chapter 9. And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom. They sought it, which God had put in his heart. Each man brought his present articles of silver and gold, garments, hammer, spices, horses, and moves at a set rate year by year. They brought something. They brought something. They brought something. Why? Because he provided answers. Bible says the kings of the earth came to him. People was come to you to buy from you, to acquire, to find answers and solutions to that thing from you. What is that thing that you are the solution to? What are you answers to? That is what you need to start from. Where you need to start from. Are you professional enough in your field? Are you good enough to be sought after? What do you need to do? What do you need to add to your skill set? What knowledge do you need to acquire if you will live a life with a difference? This is how people come into wealth. Number five, what did I find again in the life of Solomon? Breaking the Solomon's wealth code. He, number five, he had passive income. He had merchants. He was into shipping. Though he was not directly involved, but he had merchants. Listen to this, your money must work for you. Even while you are sleeping, your money must work for you. I spoke to you. God's biblical money principle, I said it last week, I said one thing you must do is that you must diversify your income. When diversifying, you are not diversifying your energy, but you are diversifying the finances you have. Your finance will be working for you. You will send your finance on an errand. I saw this in the life of Solomon. He was not actively involved in certain businesses, uh, but they were making wealth. They were bringing returns for him. They were bringing returns for him. Uh, and at this, he was accumulating wealth. Accumulating wealth. Uh, he was not directly involved. Solomon had people who did business for him. You should have a way through which your money can be working for you even while you are sleeping. That's the idea of buying stocks. Uh, that's the idea of buying stocks outside of Nigeria. While you are sleeping in Nigeria, America is awake and that con company is making money and the money is coming to you. That's what happens uh, when you buy stock, uh, when you buy properties. Uh, you are not going there actively to look at the land you bought. Uh, it's just there, but it's accruing. Uh, money is increasing. The investment is increasing. Uh, this is how to enter into real wealth. Uh, don't just stay on one pot. Uh, put your coin, your gold coins uh, in many pots. Uh, so see today, tomorrow, because you do not know which one. Uh, will come forth big and great okay how can i prove this to you from scriptures second chronicles 9 21 to 22 bible says for the king's sheep went to tashish with the servant of iram once every three years the merchant ships came bringing gold can you see that silver ivory hips monkeys so king solomon surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom can you see that so it means therefore because he did this he surpassed because he was in this kind of business he surpassed his king he went he had merchants who went around can you see that they went they were going to bring things for him and bible says they return every three years gold silver ivory hips monkeys so king solomon surpassed all of the riches of all of the kings of the earth second chronicles 9 13 to 14 the weight of gold that came to solomon yearly was 600 and 66 talents of gold beside what the traveling merchants and traders brought can you see that the traveling merchants and traders brought and all the kings of arabia and governors of the country 
bought gold and silver to Solomon. 2 Chronicles 9.28 And they brought horses to Solomon from Egypt and from all lands. He had merchants who went and they were just going looking for opportunities. And when they find opportunities, they just bring them. Let me say this to you. There is a place, a point you accumulate wealth to. At extent, you accumulate wealth to that you now need financial managers. You will now need people over your company, sir. Those who are looking for opportunities. That was what these merchants were doing. You will find, even today, Warren Buffett, sir, Aliko Dangote, rich men in the world, Elon Musk, they have people who they tell them this is a new opportunity. They are looking for new tech companies uh, to invest in, uh, new tech companies, new corporations to invest in. Uh, why? Because these people are merchants. They do it for them. Uh, this is what Solomon had. Uh, this is an experience you will find uh, even in the life of Solomon. And you need to get to that level. You must have passive income. No matter how small, let it be coming. In trickles, let it be coming. Invest in shares, invest in stocks. Uh, invest uh, in businesses uh, just know all the information you need to know the risk the reward uh, ask yourself where those risks can see is it worth taking uh, and then number six uh, i think this is where i stopped today breaking the solomon's wealth code he had massive wealth from tribute and tax what you can call royalty now this is a secret that many rulers leaders and nations have discovered they have discovered that if you tax your people you will have more income and that's what the nation every nation does you have personal income tax you have um, you have tax from commodities you purchase uh, you have production tax you have manufacturing tax what are they doing they are trying to get income for themselves and solomon did this also he levied tribute on people a whole lot of words came to him because people pay tribute and tax. First Kings chapter 4, verse 21. And Solomon ruled over all the kingdoms from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Egypt. These countries, look at this, these countries brought tribute and were Solomon's subject all his life. Now, the question is how does this concern you as a believer? How does that concern the believer today? You may not rule over a land, but you can also be a creator. You can reign in your intellectual sphere and your intellectual space. You can create and what you create, you can be paid for. And that's what you call royalty. People pay people for using their product, for using their product. They pay them for using their content. You are paid for that. It's called royalty. Therefore, son of God, child of God, start creating start creating in tech world start creating start creating a solution an app that will be the answer start creating the software that will be the answer and then they begin to pay you for royalty that is what solomon had he was getting paid royalty allow me say to you that microsoft makes a lot of money just from royalty just from royalty so solomon also had a lot of that a lot of people are being paid today because of the content they create. Therefore, today you have a lot of emergency YouTube creators. Why? Because they understand that if they put their content there, they are going to be paid for it. I know that even the EU now is looking at how Facebook can be paying for the content on their platform. Why? Because these are people intellectual properties. Listen, your intellectual property can be paid for. It is time for believers to begin to create after God. God said he made man in in his own image after his own likeness. And our God is a creative God. Solomon add that it was creative you can be paid royalty for the song you sing you can be cre- you can be paid royalty for your content for your for your even background sound people are paid for that you can be paid for the app you can be paid for the software you can be paid for many things ask yourself what can i create and start creating the spirit of the creative one is inside of you it's time for you to unleash it if you are going to get to massive kingdom wealth you have to do some of these things I've highlighted for you because this is how Solomon gets into wealth God told him I am going to make you wealthy I'm going to make you wealthy and he already had wealth because he had come into inherited wealth before that time but God was moving him up and because God was moving him up he started doing the five things I said to you and you also need to do them you need to do them at the level 
where you can't. You might not be able to play at the big level right now that Solomon was playing, but you must take advantage of that. Everybody can sell something. Everybody can be in business of services. Everybody can do something about this life. I know that God has a plan for your life. And if I find anything again in the life of Solomon, it was that he had koinonia with God. There was a communion with God. And you will discover that immediately that communion got cut off. Things started happening in his life also. Listen to this uh, child of God. Uh, if God gives a thing, if God is the source of a thing, it will also take God to maintain it. Uh, child of God, if God gives you wealth, uh, it will also take his presence uh, even to maintain that wealth. Uh, if God gives you a power to make wealth, an idea, it will also take God to sustain uh, and to breathe his life upon that idea so that the idea will go from glory to glory, from levels to level and from height to height. Uh, child of God, uh, you need God for your sustenance, not only for your spiritual sustenance but you also need god uh, even for your financial sustenance it's important we do these things it's important we stay with god it's important we commit our ways to god bible says trust in the law with all your heart lean not in your own understanding no not some not only your spiritual life uh, Oh, Proverbs 3, 5 or 6, uh, he says, but in all your ways acknowledge him. Uh, and Bible says he will straighten your path. Uh, there is a straightening of path in God. There is a straightening of path in God. There is a way that is right in God for our finances. And it is time for us to begin to move in that level. That's my gift for you. Don't just listen to these uh, words. I want you to listen again and again and again. Uh, because something is dropping in you. An idea is dropping in you. That's going to move you to the next level. It's time to begin also to break codes that, in your, that are in your life limiting you. When you put in that code, the code of God, things begin to happen on a very graceful level. I want you to tell a friend about this video. Share with somebody. Let them know God's idea for their life is wealth. But God said it is not the end of it. There are certain things you must do. You must align with God. You must stay in God's presence. You must do the right thing. You must buy, you must sell. You must stay in God's presence. You must batter. You must do what is right. You can import, you can export. There are opportunities and we find examples in scriptures and if we will do them. Bible says these things we are written for our learning. Let's learn and let's practice them because we know that if the result was that for Solomon, that will also be the result in our own life too. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you.